topic is a very specific one, home inspection. I mean, I think it's fair to say on most contracts that's probably the heavy negotiation item, right? Once you finalize price and things. So, uh, both from listing agent side and buyer's agent side, I guess, how do you guys handle? Maybe we should rephrase it like, you know, issues that, I mean, usually it's about issues, right? That you are negotiating. Yeah. The, the buyer's agent come back and tells you that, terrible home inspection, house falling apart. You know, or whatever. I mean, just to get their point across, I guess. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, depending on which side you're on, how do you deal with those things? I hate negotiating with the home inspection. It's probably like the worst because people get so little. Uh, so I try to get them to... to There's to, a to, nail in the wall, it's like, damn it. It's like ridiculous. Like yeah. it's probably one of the ones I kind of really don't like negotiating, but obviously it's part of the job. Um, but I, the one thing I've learned is like to, if, if possible, if it's a competitive market situa situation, you can't do it as much, but to identify like the things that are older, like if it's an older roof, older HVAC, kind of incorporate that into the offer, at least get that into your buyer's minds so that they understand that this is an issue. Because during a back and forth negotiation, $5,000 flies on and off, you know, and sellers won't blink an eye over it. But if you ask for $5,000 during a home inspection item, like for not forget it, but it's, it's a lot harder to get that money now that you're locked into the contract versus during that time when things are kind of floating by. If I'm on the buyer side, obviously, you know, I more and more the buyers are asking me, you know, you know, what do you think is reasonable? And when you come to a seller with a reasonable list of items, you usually get a reasonable response. But when you send them this like long mm -hmm. list of like anti tip bracket for the stove, yes. like all these like stupid the little things that um, aren't necessarily major issues, like the more you can leave those things off, maybe one or two of those items I can drop off, but the shorter the list that is identifying actual issues, that's where we I find more success in getting the seller to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, but from a seller perspective, you know, I just tell them, you know, if it were you, how would you want the house delivered? And, you know, most, most of the sellers I work with are reasonable. They want to fix the issues. They're not just trying to, like, brush the, everything under the rug. Um, so that's kind <laughs> of, yes. Yeah, I always ask, um, during the buyer interview, I'll make sure we talk about home inspections. And I always tell them if it's structural, functional, mechanical, or safety related, then that's reasonable to ask for. If it's cosmetic, if it's something that's... I've had people ask for the dryer vents to be cleaned out lately and just stuff yeah. that... You know, a sell that can, and I make sure the buyers understand that it does not take much to send a seller over the edge and not take care of reasonable things that they would otherwise take care of. So I feel like... You know, I had um, this conversation with a buyer the other day, and then when they sent me what they wanted to put on there, there were 14 items, and seven of them were so not what we talked about. So <laughs> I called them, and I said, you know, oh, thank you so much for going through the list, and I went through these two, and, you know, I understand how these some of these are a little bit piddly. I said, but why don't we do this? I said, you know, I feel like I can success successfully negotiate the bigger items that are really important to you guys if we take off these smaller items. Mm -hmm. I said, we can go about it either way that you want to. I said, but I honestly feel like if I put these smaller things on, you're gonna have a seller who reacts and nitpicks and I probably won't get as many of the major things done. And they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, not a problem at all. Just go ahead and take those off. Now, sometimes the buyer doesn't say that. Sometimes they're like, well, just go ahead and ask. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna ask, but just remember, this is probably gonna be a more difficult process. And I will throw that back in there because when I call them back and now they won't do half of what we wanted them to do, it's now on Nothing them. At all. <laughs> right. Um, but from a seller, I do the same thing. Structural, functional, mechanical, safety related, and anything that they would potentially have to disclose to another buyer should this contract fall through. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything like that, then I will make sure that they understand, you know, that we really need to try to address that because it could be an right. issue in the future. You know, and I had that seller, the same buyer who sent a very reasonable inspection over considering the list of items that we had, the seller came back and wasn't going to pay all the radon, um, wasn't going to do a couple of things. And so we called them right back and just said, you know, no, we really, these things need to be done. We paid full price. We didn't pay all of our closing costs. While, because they came back and said, well, we really priced this house strong and you know it was a little bit low. So we called them back and said, we sure did. And we paid that price and less than the closing. And we have these other things to deal with. So while we, it, you know, thank you for your response, We're, We those things have to be done. And I reminded him, you know, that radon, you're going to have to fix that. You're going to disclose that to anybody else, and any reasonable buyer is going to want that. And mm -hmm. the agent and I know each other, but we were both a little bit forceful with each other. It was real nice at the beginning, but the seller started digging their heels in. And so, you know, that's when you call and you say, thank you very much, and this is exactly where we stand. <laughs> the worst thing you can do, especially as a new agent, is just write down everything that the home yeah. inspector yeah. came up yes. with, because <laughs> that is like we waving a red flag advice. in front of a bowl. The other thing is, if you group things when you're writing up the items to be 
repair and the deficiencies. Mm -hmm. I have like the electrical and I'll put all the yeah. and then plumbing too. It doesn't seem as bad as things One, all two, over the yeah. place. Five, it sounds six. like you have to get 700 people in there exactly. to fix these mm -hmm. things. And it's not as bad <laughs> sometimes as you think. And I have a handyman that I use all the time and quite often I will send him a home inspection addendum and say, can you please let me know approximately what this will cost? Because a lot of times the little things that add up are not as scary, like mm -hmm. Pat's saying, as they mm -hmm. look. There could be a lot on there and he'll shoot me back just a quick text or say, you know, obviously he hasn't gone, it's approximate. Um, but if I know I'm dealing with a situation with a seller or a buyer who doesn't have much money where this could cause a problem, then I also need to know how much it is for me because if it's $350 and that's going to break the deal, then I might just say that I'm happy to go ahead and take care of this for everybody. But most often it helps with the negotiations because then you take it back to the seller and say, you know, I wasn't sure how, how much some of this would cost and, you know, I'm not, and I always make sure people know, I don't know this stuff. Like, how am I supposed to know what a crawl space is going to cost with all this or whatever? Um, I mean, I know approximations but from doing knowing it. knowing approximately is important. Right, it that's is. why you've got to follow those home inspectors around, especially when you're yes. new. And ask them, what do you think that would cost if you have no clue and you've never had that one come up before? Which also reminds me by saying that, don't do your home inspection on the last day of the contingency. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, give you enough time yeah. to sit with your buyer to discuss those That's types of point. things. You know, one of the things I always do is doing the buyer interview, I will ask buyers if certain things come up at the home inspection. I mean, most of them are educated enough. What are items that if they come up, there is, there is no, they either get fixed or the deal is off the table? And, and most buyers, like roof is usually <laughs> right, one thing. Uh, if the HVAC system is completely shot, meaning the whole thing needs to be replaced, because that's a huge, those are huge items, right? And, and I have had buyers that both where either A, the seller did agree, like I had a buyer once the roof was complete. I mean, the, the home inspector came down with a crumble of shingles in his hand. And it was kind of like, and the buyer said, yeah, they love the house and everything, but you know, unless the seller was going to replace this roof, mm -hmm. this was not happening, mm -hmm. period. And so I knew that as a, as a buyer's agent. And of course, sure, we, it happened, the seller did replace the roof, so we were lucky in that regard. But, but there have been situations where buyers will walk away because it's just not, you can come to terms. But again, that's why it's so important, I think, from up front to set these expectations, to know your buyers, and to know what's going to push them over the edge. You know, one of the other things I do, actually, um, usually after, like I will talk to them, and then I send them home and then I say, okay, I, especially if, let's say you have like two people that are going to buy this house, right? And I say, I, I'm going to assign you homework and you have 24 hours and then you have to hand in your homework to me, basically. And the homework is, I want you independently, not together at the kitchen table, but independently, I want you to write a list of five items that are an absolute must on a home. Like you are not, I mean, I always say, those are the items you want. You're not going to negotiate on it. If the house doesn't have this then you're not even willing to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, so then, and most of them get excited, like, ooh, this is kind of good, right? Because they, they look all over the place and whatever. And so then I get the assignment back, and what you're hoping for, obviously, is that there is matches on this list, right? Okay. So that you can come back and say, okay, it looks like both of you absolutely must have a two-car garage, great. So we don't have to look at a rambler that doesn't have one, or whatever the case might be, right? So it helps you narrow things down, but I've had buyers who will put on there things like, like I said, well, if the roof is shut or that, you know, they don't want it. So mm -hmm. it just gives me more information about them. And so as we're going through this process, I just kind of feel like, you know, I have this list and I've pulled the list back out if they like verge off and I'm like, uh-uh, remember? Like, you know, so it just kind of helps, but it's just an exercise to get to know them a little bit. I always talk about that when I talk about the property disclosure statement. So when we mm -hmm. go over signing the residential property disclosure statement, we talk about anything materially defective. Mm -hmm. And then that's typically when I ask those questions because I think it's important for us to know right off the bat so that if that home inspection report comes in and some of those items are you know are mentioned you can say well you did mention that that might be an issue and it has come forward but you're reminding them that they right. told you it was an issue they miraculously you know? don't remember yeah, it what? that's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>